I clearly picked wrong for myself the last time. And now, if I'm gonna be exclusive with somebody, then I wanna make sure I'm picking correctly. Season eight of Summer House is here. Okay, can you believe it? <laughs> how did we get here? Do you remember the first season and how far, I mean, what has this journey been like for you? It's kind of wild, right? Um, yeah, eight years, eight seasons of Summer House. Um, it just, I think it gets better and better every year mm -hmm. <laughs> for the show. You know, I don't know about me personally. <laughs> <laughs> You've been through a lot. A lot has gone on in the last eight months of your life. Are you ready for the world to get an inside look at what happened this summer and fall? Um, yeah, you know, I think I, I feel at peace with everything. Yeah. Um, it's I've already lived it. Yes, I have to relive it, but I feel okay. I think that maybe I'll pick up on some things and get some answers that I didn't get before. Um, I'll be there with the monocle, you know, along with all the other viewers, like trying to like put the pieces of the puzzle together. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, everything with with the breakup happens, you know, towards the end of the season. Yeah. So I I'm easing into it. People, this, I'm glad you said that because people think you guys have a say in editing. They think that you're screening really pro uh, like far ahead of us seeing the episodes. And that's not true. You really don't know. I wish I did. Then I wouldn't be like screaming about sandwiches and getting <laughs> activated <laughs> and like have all of this like really embarrassing stuff about me, you know, on video. But yeah, no, we have no no hand in editing, unfortunately. So you're going to hear things from Carl and your other castmates that you didn't know they said. Um, yeah, like we don't we don't know, you know, there's 10 of us, right? So we don't know what's happening behind closed doors mm -hmm. all the time in private conversations. And um, so I think it'll be it'll be nice to, you know, like I said, like connect some dots in yeah. that way. Um, but yeah, for the most part, we're in a house. So we, we do kind of have a sense of like what everyone is saying about who and when. Um, but yeah, it should be interesting. You're a girl on the go. I'm like loving watching this journey for you. You obviously had your heart broken, but you're on the up. Yeah. So talk to me about life right now. You just uh, you just bought the Hubs house, yeah. right? Tell me about the Hubs house. Yeah, so I first went to Nashville in October, and then I went back in November. I saw you at the CMAs, yes. um, looked at houses the day after yeah. um, in November, and then Closed, um, put an offer in around Thanksgiving, closed at the end of December, designed it in January, and then installed everything about two weeks ago. Yeah. So yeah, hubhousenashville.com if you want to rent it out. Check it out. I wish, I, I didn't want to leave. Like I was there for 10 days and it's so comfortable. It's so inviting. Mm -hmm. It's perfect for, you know, group trips. And Nashville's like a big group party destination. Yeah. So. I felt like it was a, a perfect place to own a home and rent it out to everyone. Yeah, would you ever move to Nashville? Um, you know, it depends on you know who I wind up settling down with. <laughs> I love Nashville, honestly. <laughs> I, there are a lot of cute men out there. Yeah, they're, so. they're real cute and they have nice booties. Exactly. <laughs> and they like to chop wood for us. And yeah, and ride horses. <laughs> <laughs> and ride horses. So you honestly, you never know, you know? Yeah. We'll I mean, see. We'll see if I can lasso a country boy or, you know, if I wind up with a New York man. I, it just depends. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. I'm kind of all over the place right yeah. now. I'm so busy traveling with girlfriends. Um, Hub House Nashville has kept me extremely busy over the last three months uh, alone. So, okay. yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. Keeping your options open right now. Yes. The roster is stacked. Yeah. We got we got some on the bench. Okay. Others we kick off the team. It's a constant rotation, but for people that are watching or listening, that's kind of what you need to do when you're single and especially out of something so heavy, you need to have that time for yourself. Well, and it's now more about like I, you know, I clearly picked wrong for myself the last time and now if I'm gonna be exclusive with somebody, mm -hmm. then I wanna make sure I'm picking correctly. Yes. And and it's somebody who is compatible okay. with me. Um, so yeah, I don't know, that's a process to, you know, it takes time to right. really understand like, 
everyone's full self. Um, so right now I'm just having fun, you know, dating around and as they say, save a horse. <laughs> Ride a cowboy, baby. <laughs> Okay, wait. Uh, oh you gosh, DM'd I hate anyone? that we're friends because I feel like yeah, we're just having girl talk <laughs> right now. And <laughs> I'm like trying so hard to not say anything. It's <laughs> confidential. We're having okay. a tough time. Yes, we're having a tough time. Uh, okay, any? Have you slid into anybody's DMs, or are you just kind of hanging and they're sliding in? Um, I did. I did slide into a couple of DMs recently okay. um any success is it working i wouldn't even i, wouldn't I mean even know they've answered say. but like one okay. lives in scotland so i'm like do i come to scotland Wait, i know who you're talking about you oh yeah we have to talk off camera about this oh yeah i've heard stories but maybe that's why about. i know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> oh okay. my god that is so funny oh we're just okay. gonna giggle this whole interview um yeah and then the other one lives in new york but you know everyone's busy and i'm it's like hard to even just get me in New York to you're all over go the place. on. I'm all you're a businesswoman right now. You're making a career for yourself and building your career. So yeah. you're focused on that. And then maybe the right person will come along. Exactly. Right? And, and I pivoted, right? Like I was planning an entire future right. with a husband and a family and and starting with a wedding, um, and then that was just ripped out from underneath me, right? Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, that was like kind of my version of success right now for myself. Right. And then I pivoted and I was like, but that's that's not what defines me. Right. You know, like a husband and, and a family is not what defines Lindsay. Right. What I also deem as individual success is my financial success and owning businesses mm -hmm. and you know having all these projects that can build my future financial you know growth growth Absolutely. so so that's what I deem and it's like well that's what I'm focused on if you can fit into my life then great and if not then I'm not gonna go chasing so Carl recently said that there are still entanglements between you and him on his end what does that mean I don't understand. I assume he's talking to, talking about the apartment entanglements, like what connections that we have. Right. Yeah. I mean, listen, we we signed our lease, like re-signed it for a second year, a month before he broke up with right. me. So why would I ever re-sign a lease with a man who I'm gonna not be with? Like I would never sign up for that. But mm -hmm. it's something that he probably should have thought of yeah. before re-signing a lease. Um, and yeah, like so. We're we're both still paying for the apartment, and I live there, and he doesn't. But that was a decision that he made for himself. Totally, yeah. And he that's did. not doesn't it's not like on me, you know. So maybe that's what he's talking about. But why can't I don't know I don't know why that's holding him back from dating. I guess we'd have to ask him. I don't know what his entanglements are. I don't really watch his interviews or right. pay attention to him. <laughs> Good. I think that's healthy for you. Yeah, I'm like I'm on, I'm I'm in like in a totally different like atmosphere at the moment. Right, and, I get it. You know, yeah, we have to rewatch and we have to relive. You know, something for me was probably the most traumatic thing that has ever happened in my adult life, and I have to rewatch that back. And is that hard to date while still processing and healing from your past relationship? That yeah. most everyone in the world doesn't have to do right. that you know i couldn't like do it. i could not do it i would go into a hole and i would not come out for like, like a couple of years so i yeah. really admire um, you so maybe he has a different strategy with dating um i think that's probably healthier for him i think maybe it's yeah. good that he is focusing on himself yes um i think for me like what works for me in my my healing journey um is you know is to put myself out there and you know keep moving forward. I mean, if you really think about it, had we continued, you know, down the path that we were on to our future, fine, no problem. But since he handled things the way that he did in such yeah. a disrespectful, you know, way, I think it was easier for me to turn those emotions off and say, no, like you get no more emotions out of me. And you know, I, I, still, ha I still heal, yeah. you know, but it comes and goes in waves at different times. Like it's not, like I don't need to just sit on my couch right. and cry. Like I, I can like have a, a, a thought that pops in my head 
and multitask mm -hmm. while still like going on a date with a guy, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. But he also took two very critical years out of my life. Yes. Like 35 to 37, like those are critical years. As, yeah, they are, for, especially for women. Absolutely. Exactly. So now you don't get to control any Anymore. any other hesitation in, in me to find a partner who actually is a good fit. Yeah. On Nick Vial's podcast, I listened to all, I think it was like two hours. It was so long. I know. I was like, why is this so long? I know. I listened to the whole thing. And you say that you went down kind of a deep dive. You kind of like were rethinking all the conversations you guys had and revisiting a lot of moments in your relationship. And you did have some kind of light bulb moment in a way. Can you add any context to that? What you realized about the relationship? Um, you know, I think... I was so in love with Carl. I was so in love with him before we were ever even dating, oh. you know? And we were best friends for eight years, like, and when we were together and we were in a relationship, I think I had these blinders on because I, I was just so in love with him. And I was like, he's my best friend. Like, and you know, this is a fairy tale. Like I, I get to marry my best friend and like, woo. And it's all documented, like adds to kind of that, <clears throat> almost fantasy in a way, you know, we got to see you guys be friends and like we were on this journey with you, the wedding and then, you know. Yeah, so I think I had blinders on to a lot of red flags mm. that I was ignoring. And when everything happened, I sat with my girlfriends for literally every single day for two weeks and we just put everything on the table. And we just started sifting through all of these red flags that I was ignoring yeah. which so, which happens even to the even to the best of us yeah. you know like even to strong women you like i'm i'm a, I'm a lover yeah. um so yeah i found a lot of red flags that i was ignoring and at the end of those two weeks i was like okay this was the best decision that could have happened to me yeah uh at BravoCon. I talked to Paige and she told us that she is Switzerland in this situation. So what was that like navigating this with the rest of the group? Who really had your back? Who did you kind of feel like maybe didn't? Um, to be honest, like the girls were a tremendous help this summer. Like we all got That's along. Right. We were like, you know, we had so much fun together and their support meant the world to me. They they really rallied around me. Like, even if I was having conflict with Carl, they were right there to, um, you know, give me advice, listen, um, validate, you know, whatever I was feeling. And so when everything went down, they, you know, they, they were just really Good. supportive of, you know, of me and like what just happened. So... I really appreciated having the girls support this summer. Good. And Danielle and you have kind of totally gotten through your tough times. It seems like you guys are back to being mustard and ketchup. <laughs> Arroz con pollo, yes. ketchup and mustard. Yes. We don't know. We have a lot of names. <laughs> um, yeah. So we were rebuilding at the top of the summer, right? Okay. Like we had sat down for lunch and then we, you know, started filming. Um, and so Danielle and I were rebuilding slowly but surely throughout the summer. Um, but it didn't take too long because we kind of just fell right back into like, you know, our love for each other and our goofiness and, and all the things that made us best friends to begin with. So it didn't take that long to get back together with Danielle. Okay, um, and then once everything happened at the end of summer, she, she was a great support and she was really there for me. And good. she is very ride or die when it comes to that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're, we're doing great. Good. There's a new cast member. What is he like? Um, so yes, we have uh, two new guys. So we have West. Oh, two. Okay. Yeah, we have West and Jesse. West, I had met the summer of season seven. Um, so like a year before this summer, uh, and he's a vibe. Like he's just he's very memorable. He's so fun. He um, he's he's hilarious and quick. Yeah. Um, Jesse is also you know, very memorable, good looking, um, and the ladies love him. So it's it's nice to have more masculine energy in the house. It was this not season. balanced last year as much as I think we needed. You yeah, know? and like guy drama is just it's so funny. <laughs> it's so funny. 
And it kind of just like lightens the load of the girl it's drama. It's so different guy yeah. drama. You know, they like hug. How many times have, have Kyle and Carl hugged it out? Oh, you know, yeah. like. They and then when you see them cry, you're like, oh gosh. Um, but yeah, so so it's fun. They're like, it's like a fresh new energy to the house that I think we needed with like the the masculine energy. Yes. Okay. This yeah. is exciting. I'm very excited to see this. Uh, finally, we see this sit down that is in the trailer. We knew that it was happening because of all the tabloids that came out saying Carl called production, said he was go had something to say to you. You guys sit down. We see in the teaser a very brief clip. What do you think people will be most surprised to see in that sit down? Um, yeah, that conversation was it was very shocking. Um, I think in a trailer, right? You're not they're not going to put the whole conversation of the breakup in the trailer, right? But there is so much in that conversation that I think people will appreciate. Me personally, like I got to be honest, like I was really proud of the way I handled myself mm. in that moment. Mm. I mean, first of all, I was in shock because I couldn't believe what was happening and how we got there. Um, but also just like the way I handled myself, mm. um, you know, and I think and I hope that other women who might be going through something similar, you know, can draw a little bit of inspiration from that conversation. I think they totally will. Yeah. I'm so proud of you for how you handled it in just the clip. I could tell <laughs> that you were not, you know, you didn't let yourself lose control. Right. You didn't act, you didn't get activated. I didn't get activated. <laughs> You yeah. handled it, it seems like, really calmly and maturely. Yeah. In a really hard I felt moment. that. Right. Um, yeah. And I'm not ever going to be the girl who, you know, changes, is, tries to change someone's mind. Mm -hmm. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. I will go. never beg. Hell no. <laughs> we do not beg. No. We don't need to. Okay, wait. I forgot about this one last We're, we're over here saving horses. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of horses, there were some rumors about you and country singer Dustin Lynch. Mm hmm What can you tell me about that? Oh, I mean, I don't kiss and tell. 